what you would do then is go and get it notarized. Make sure you have your documents witnessed. Then you will go down to the Register of Deeds office, which is also referred to as the County Recorder. You will ask them to put it on public record under miscellaneous of the real estate section. Each county is different. They may say to the clerk of civil filing of superior court or the circuit court. Once you are there, you ask for a registry number or register number and ask for it to be put on the public record. Once you have done that at the public record at either the Register of Deeds Office, which is the county recorder, or either at the clerk of civil file on the Superior Court or the Circuit Court, once you have gone to one of those two places and have it done on the public record, then that is a done deal. You can make copies of the documentation, which is your affidavits, put a copy in a briefcase, tucked away just in case for a rainy day. Take another copy, put inside of your notebook, your folder, and guard it just in case if there is any court dates in which that comes up. You will want to send copies of your affidavit, in particular of your nationality or portions of it, certified mail return receipt to any court date, putting them on notice that you're not a citizen of the United States. The 14th Amendment never fully ratified. The Dreskot case specifically states that you're not a citizen of the United States. You can also do a restricted appearance, which is also referred to as a special appearance for any court situation, saying that you're only there in court under threat of arrest or coercion, that's TDC. Yeah, yeah too much change. As well as also PC, yeah. You will want to make sure that it's in a file mail return receipt. You want to make sure that it's put in your case. Also, if you have any case that you're dealing with, you want to make sure that the DA get a copy of your information. So you will also want to send a copy of it to the assistant DA or DA's office. That means the judge is a copy when it's put in the record. The DA will give it to them as well as the DA will have one themselves. Make sure, once again, the special appearances is on a green receipt that is sent certified mail return receipts. Also, you want to do a counterclaim or countersuit if you have a case, particularly concerning traffic matters. As majority of the traffic matters are infractions, they're not crimes. However, they put you into criminal court in order to handle the matter. For a crime to, to exist, it must be an injured party. That's Sherrill versus Collins. If there's no injured parties, then there's no crime. The matter should even be in court. There's no damage. Then, if, then there is no crime. The matter should once again not be in court. The whole thing about Establishing your nationality, establishing notice of special appearance or restricted appearance, which is based on TDC, is all based on the fact that 
you're not a U.S. citizen or will you ever be there for the court has to prove jurisdiction? Jurisdiction can only be proven if the court states for the record that they have jurisdiction over the person and or over the subject matter. The fact that you have stated for the record that you are there on the TDC, threat to arrest coercion, that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified, and that based on the Dred Scott case, you're not a U.S. citizen or will you ever be, proves that the, four, that the 14th Amendment is not valid to you, nor does the court have jurisdiction. All right? Now, the next thing, of course, is authenticating your birth certificate. And your birth certificate is still worth millions of dollars. I wish that that's what we're going to go over tonight, as well as also the executor letter or executrice letter. How the birth certificate was made into a bond is worth millions, billions of dollars. Let's see. So right as you see here, that's the bond number in the upper left-hand corner. In the bottom left-hand corner is the American Bank Note Company. That's what we talking about the last class, so which that shows that this birth certificate is a bond, a negotiable instrument. So when the United States declared bankruptcy, it pledged all Americans as collateral against the national debt. All right, Congress can go on eliminating the means by which that you can pay. You also assume legal responsibility for providing a new way for you to pay. And it did that by providing what is known as the exemption. An exemption from having to pay for anything in practical terms, thus this meant giving every American something to pay with, and that something is your credit. Right, your valuable or your your value to society was then and still is calculated upon the actual table and at birth. Bonds equal to this average value or created. What is the average value? Is a six hundred and fifty thousand dollars based on the IRC, which is the Internal Revenue Code. I understand that this is currently between one to two million dollars now as the bank marks up the value, all right? So a child born between five to 10 pounds is worth 650,000 to $1.6 million at birth. Of course, the child is worth his weight in gold. Let's say gold is worth $1,000 right now. Of course, it's a little bit more than that, all right? And $1,000 is 16 ounces. So one ounce is a thousand dollars. Sixteen ounces, right? Sixteen thousand. The bank gets it, do ten times the value, so that becomes a hundred and sixty um, thousand to one point six million. Based on ten pounds, that child is worth weighing. All right. So they go from one hundred and sixty thousand. Walk it up 10 times the value to 1.6 million. These bonds are collateralized by the birth certificate, which becomes a negotiable instrument. The bonds are hypo, um, hypothecated, traded until their value is unlimited for all intents and purposes. And all that credit creates a technical and rightfully yours. In point of fact, you should be able to go into any store in America. All right, and buy anything and everything in sight, telling the clerk to charge it to your exemption account, which is identified by a nine-digit number that you recognize as your Social Security number. That's the number without the dashes. It's your EIN, which stands for your exemption identification number. All right?
right? The number on the back is the password to your exemption identification number, which taps you to the bank, on which that, based on the letter in the beginning, the alpha numeric, all right? Remember A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, all right? Now, these particular letters, once again, are the Federal Reserve Bank in which that, is con in which that the birth certificate is attached to. Okay. Now, at the bottom of that page, as we just um, showed with the birth certificate, the American Bank Note Company is right there on the birth certificate. All right, I'm connecting so many dots today, um, I think my head is starting to spin around. I'm keeping green vomit like the little girl in Exodus. <laughs> um, but this is how disturbing this stuff is. Um, this type of awareness should not leave the reader feeling powerless, but empowered. The reason this has gone as far, so far, or so long, is a direct result of our collective ignorance. I realize this stuff is not easy to believe and even harder to understand, especially to the newly awakened, and even more so to those who are still asleep. This is a quote I forced myself to memorize for this very reason. A truth, initial commotion, is directly proportional to how deeply the lie was believed. It was the world being round that agitated people that it wasn't even that it wasn't flat. What a well packaged web of lies have been so gradually to masses over generations. The truth will seem utterly preposterous and the speaker a raven lunatic. This is just in um, James. Now we know that that's even the debate right now about how round the world is. It's definitely not as round as NASA has been shown us in, in their particular um, pictures. All right. We know that at the poles it is flattened. Now, um, if you turn, if the Earth is turned sideways, it will actually look more like an egg. All right. I belong. It will be an egg shape. All right. And how many United States declare bankruptcy, pledge, or American as collateral against the national debt and confiscated or gold? Eliminate the means by which you could pay. It also assumed legal responsibility for providing a new way for you to pay. And it did that by providing what is known as the exemption. An exemption for having to pay for anything. In practical terms, through this meant giving every American something to pay with, and that something is your credit. All right? Now, we say that, we say this. Your value to society was then and still calculated with actual tables at birth and bonds equaling um, that average value or created. All right? Now, like you said, the birth certificate is between 650000 to $1.6 million at birth. At 18, it becomes matured, which means it goes into the hundreds of millions at that point. When they're a bunch together, um, these bunch um, bundle um, bonds now goes into the billion. Now, the birth certificate created a fiction. In the name of that baby in all upper caps is that fiction. All right? That's the straw man. Now, the state providence sold or sells the birth certificate to the Commerce Department of the Corporation of the United States, which in turn places a bond on the birth certificate, thereby making an negotiable instrument and placing the fiction called a straw man into the warehouse of the Corporation um, of the United States, which is the Department, department of um, DTC, Depository Trust Company. All right, then it goes to a subsidiary, Depository Trust Clearance Company or Corporation. All right, representations for the created fiction 
was given to the BAR, which is the British Accreditation Regency or Registry, owned and operated by the Crown, for the purpose of contacting or contracting the fiction, which most of us think is ourselves into a third party action. Do not underestimate the power behind this trick. It is a con. Um, is to con us into contracting with the Fed so that they can legally confiscate our property. All these contracts have only a signature on them because the corporate fiction cannot contract. Only natural person have the right to contract and the right um, not to contract, right? And that's what we come on. Natural persons have that right, right? Because there is no full disclosure. You are never told that you just signed away what is believed to be your property. These contracts are fraudulent. Remember, for a contract to exist, it must, once again, it must be, all right, sealed and signed, witnessed or by notary. And both parties must do so in front of the notary. That's a binding contract. Otherwise, anything where the contract is signed by someone else or is just simply signed by you is called an adhesive contract. That is not an actual contract. So like, for example, um, a driver's license is not an actual contract. And what is it called again, brother? Adhesive contract. A marriage certificate is not a, is not a um, actual contract. Only when a notary is present and they can verify that both signatures um, is that of the parties involved. Yeah. So that means that anything else is not for disclosure. You're never told that you just signed away what believed to be the property. These contracts are fraudulent and hence we are still the lawful owner and profit earned by the feds for selling securities. Our property belonging to us we must go into a fund for our benefit. Otherwise, it would be on fraud. Now, want to be charged with fraud, the feds has to charge or has to create a remedy for us and hope that we won't discover it. But even a deeper understanding of the birth certificate process, we go further and the best example of the um, effect of registration is the birth certificate. A bankrupt entity, city, state, providence, country, cannot operate in commerce. So how do they manage? Since the United States has been bankrupt for decades, having no substance such as gold and civil backing, and the only assets it um, has is men and women and our labor. We are the collateral for the interest on the loan of the World Bank. All right? or what is called the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, all right, and the Federal Reserve Bank. All three of them together um, creates a centralized banking system. Each of us is registered via the application for a um, birth certificate. The Treasury issues a bond on the birth certificate, and the bond is sold as a security exchange and bought by the Federal Reserve Bank which then uses its collateral to issue the bank notes. This is why um, we showed you that um, you have on the money, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, um, I, um, on the money. Same thing on the back of the Social Security card with the alpha numeric number. All right? Both of them shows that they're coming from the same banking system or Federal Reserve Bank. Right, like we said, if it's B, New York City, C, um, Cleveland, Ohio, um, D, um, I can't remember, E, uh, yeah, Baltimore, um, E, uh, Richmond, Virginia, S, Atlanta, Georgia, these are all part of these Federal Reserve Banks. We are the surety on the said bond, all right? So our labor or energy is then payable at some future date. Hence, we become the transmitting utility for the transmission of energy. 
This is why transmission uti transmitting utility is on the UCC1 financing statement. It's on the first page. Right before you get down to the collateral listing, it asks you on what type of UCC filing is this. And it says right there, transmitting utility. All right, the United States government, in order to provide necessary goods and services, creates a commercial bond, which is a promissory note, by pledging the property, labor, life, and body of the citizen, or uh, is alleged citizen, as payment for the debt bankruptcy. This commercial bond made chattel properties out of all of us. We become more than the, uh, nothing more than human resources and collateral for the debt. This is without our knowledge and or our consent via the file and registration of our birth certificate. The mums um, applies um, for the bankrupt um, for the um, birth certificate. This is the mothers, um, which are the informants. The application is registered. The legal title of the baby is then transferred from the mother to the state. The mother is left with an uh, um, equitable title of her own um, baby whom she can use for a fee. It used tax. Since the payment does not belong to her, she um, has to treat it in a manner which the owner wants. If not, the child can, um, the child can be, be confiscated because it's a war to the state. Poop all the your child? taxes be paid. Yes, the child. Like if they're not going to school and they come and get get them, right? Like DSS, stuff like that, right? Yes. Right. Because yeah. they own it. Because the, because the mother signed away the child via the birth certificate. It's crazy. If you borrow some um, money from someone and say, I'm going to repay it, I don't care if it's a mafia, some said or some made up big brother organization or bank, still in the still in regardless on what you believe. Two wrongs don't make a right. <coughs> so I was wondering that too late. Like, we don't know it. We don't know that the yeah. debt is prepaid. Or nobody told us that on the back of the social security card that is called a prepaid levy bond account. Or the IMF number. The problem with this response is that it's based on the back review of what money and credit really is. What if um, everything were ever been thought or taught by the um, system to believe about money and credit is an illusion? Well, it is. Many of us um, will read this article already knowing that. Yet, even those who do know um, still can't even wrap their heads around how the system works in actuality. Believe me, they do an extremely good job of keeping these truths very well hidden. This article did a phenomenal job of breaking it down in a very simple, um, easy to understand terms. All of the facts presented are um, supportive of hard data. Also included is an example of a response letter from the AT&T to a charge being disputed, whereas the disputed party uh, requested funds by taking their prepaid treasury account to settle the alleged debt which is not shared by the blogger in the TNT on trying to retrieve from him now. All right, so. So brothers have paid their phone bills. Treasury, right? right. Am I the only one hearing it? No.
All right. So a deposit created through lending is a debt is a debt that has to be paid on demand by the depositor. Just the same as the debt arises from a customer deposit of checks and currency in the bank. Of course, they do not really pay out loans from the money they receive as deposits. If they did this, no additional money would then be created. What they do do is that mixed loans is accepted promissory notes in exchange for credit to the borrower transaction accounts. Federal Reserve Bank, Chicago, Money um, Moderate Money Mechanics, page six. All right, banks are prohibited from lending their own money from their own assets or from other depositors. So from where did the money come? The contract we signed our promissory note was converted into a negotiable instrument by the bank and became an asset on the bank's accounting books. According to UCC 1-201-24 and 3-104, it is our signature on the note which makes it the money. All right, so every time you sign something with the bank, actually you transform that contract into a promissory note. Uh, promissory notes are taken, recorded as an asset of the bank, and sold by the bank for cash without equal valuable consideration given to us for our notes. All right, the bank gives us a deposit slip as a receipt for the money we gave them, just as the bank would normally provide when we make a deposit to the bank is then creates a account at the bank which would um, contain this money which was just created. The check on this account or issue on our signature and then the account is just also funds behind the check which received as a loan. The bank risk none of his own assets in his so-called loan to us, whether it's uses our note to pay the seller in order to raise an asset for itself and use the face value of the note as principal when it is claimed that it lent us against what is charged interest. All right, Consider, on consideration on the part of the bank is non-existent, so the bank has nothing to lose. It cannot possibly sustain a loss. Such consideration is essentially to be enforceable contract and the note was obtained from us via fraud. The entire transaction contract is fraudulent. What this contract are written in such a way that it appears as if the bank lent us funds before they receive our promissory note or mortgage contract so that the bank can use it as a receipt which they can sell. Now, as soon as you sign the um, mortgage contract, that's, that is the promissory note. And actually you're supposed to take a copy of it and go down to the Register of Deeds office and put it on the public record and have the county recorder or clerk um, seal and stamp it. All right. This mortgage um, contract so that the bank can use it as a receipt, which they can sell. Um, the contract on reads for a loan I have received, but you haven't received it yet. So in fact, we um, signed and gave the mortgage contract note the um, bank prior to this giving us the funds. So the application to the loan creates the um, funds. It has our signature on it and the notes with our signature covering the funds to repay the um, loan. Again, constructive fraud. All right. Here's a link to the original article. Um, on this blog, there is also many other great posts to research. One point I did not want to um, make is that the um, gentleman on many occasions suggests filing a UCC-1 financing statement to reclaim rights to the straw man account. However, the UCC submits by, um, by the so-called One People Public Trust has effectively taken care of these steps for everyone on the planet. Therefore, it's no longer necessary for individuals to file their own um, UCC, which I don't necessarily recommend that. All right. Um, this is something in which that um, Dr. Quaker Endo, um, well, Dr. Um, Hendo Henderson, excuse me, um, stated um, based on his trust, um, which is called 
on the Melchizedek Trust. All right. Um, I I I I I wouldn't necessarily put stock in that. You know, because I haven't um, seen any information coming per se from the quote unquote United States government stating that claim that is no longer necessary. All 50 states still have the UCC one financing um, corporation division. Um, so therefore, we recommend that you do file your own UCC one financing statement and the addendum. Right now, even though there is no legal right or claim or lien, the bankers hold the title to you through your birth certificate. You can regain control by simply filing a notice of lien against the birth certificate. Right, filing notice of lien is done every day. Banks uh, regularly file notes of liens with the Department of, Tre of um, Commerce to prove and establish their interest in all kinds of property, homes, cars, tools, equipment. This is done very simply by contract contacting um, the Secretary of State or the Department of Commerce and filing a UCC-1 financial statement and listing the property as collateral on the statement. Right, This same can be done with the birth certificate, which is your property. You and only you can file this notice of lien. You and only you can determine the value. All right? So the property, since you're priced this in God's eye, the value of your UCC should be unlimited. In this case, the company is the government because you agreed to work with the government. Um, the company for the rest of your life, the government company agrees to pay all the debt you include in your lifetime, it is a bit of surprise to you. It shouldn't be. No one has told you or showed you how to use this information. In exchange for your birth certificate and your application for the Social Security card, um, which they use as collateral to reduce the debt of the bankers, the government company promises to pay your debt. You work on behalf of the United States as collateral on the national debt owners of the bankers, um, making you a private the banker whenever your debt is actually prepaid that's right your debt is prepaid and what um, it is known is the money of a money account this is not really substance real substance or money in exchange such as gold and silver only accounting adjusted adjustments and um, set offs the United States agrees to do this for you with the passage of the House Joint Resolution 192 back in 1933 all right. Shortly after the national emergency, the bank holiday declared by President Roosevelt, um, you already signed up for this program for birth. It's just that no one told you about it until now. All right. So um, look at good old companies through the United States Office of Worker Bees Insurance Benefits. This office ensures to you that it was a file out of the SS5 form, also known as the application for the Social Security Benefits. It's a warehouse or where um, um, house benefits, right? And it also the hooks that users get us to sign up for these collaterals on the national debt. This is all originally from the Shepherd Townsend or Townsend um, Maternity Act that will help new mothers with the um, charge of their children for the children uh, for the mothers was on web. This is why they asked for the maiden name of the mother on the application for the live birth. All of us are considered to be bastard children uh, with the government company as our daddy. Hence, this is how we was transformed into a corp or corporation. Corpse, as in a corpse, a dead corpse. Civilist more too, dead in the eyes of the law. The SNS is really a power of attorney for the company that issues their insurance benefit. To you, the real man and woman, PO, POA, a power of attorney was assumed by the company and the government. When they established a new account, they styled the name in all caps. Very few people normally sign their names in all caps. Your John Doe is really a corporation. Printing your name all caps, if you intend to express the name title of your corporation, you will find that your driver's license, social security card, your bank statement, your check um, blanks, your tax. Um, statements, etc. The social security number is evidence that there is an insurance policy. The benefit you receive the privilege of the Army, Navy, 
uh, police, fire protection, Medicaid, Medicare, SS1, and pension, et cetera, et cetera. So far, that is working quite well for the government corporation or company that you don't tell that how to um, go about getting your debt set off and how to access and use the prepaid account or the more money for their pet projects, wars on preemption, um, international integrity, or uh, intrigue, excuse me, um, control and dominance of the global market, etc. You perhaps read all about this in the news or seen that it is even in the news. You're letting them use your money for crimes against humanity. Okay, this is an example. Um, also, if y'all haven't seen Aaron Russo, Mad as Hell, um, the act of 1871, the full video, um, to watch it. The United States is a country, it's a corporation due to the act of 1871. The right, Homeland Security reports list, maybe levels of terrorist repeals, the act of 1871. Supreme Court rules in favor of Obamacare, the act of 1871. Um, the Bosman Act of 1871 to be free. All of this is talking about the same thing. Now, Moore's in court. Um, if you have to go to court, this is what. trustee, which is public servants, take order from the executor. The executor is the one in power who execute the order for the trustee. We appoint government as a trustee. They perform an administrative service and return benefits to us as beneficiaries. You are the executor or trustee. Black Soul Dictionary, fifth edition, executor, a person appointed by a test, test tester to carry out the directions and requests of his will and to dispose of property according to his Test testament, uh, test testamentary provisions um, after his decease. A person who enters, who is either, excuse me, especially, or by implications, implications is acting by the testers to carry out the test testers the, um, directions concerning the disposition he makes under his will, and we civil man. Um, estate 6-3 applicate um, 3D-225-285 NE second edition E I mean 5-48-550 personal represent representative including executor uniform probate code 1-201 comparing administrative for co-executor general executor instituted executor joint executor Member the executor, special executor, and substitute executor see those titles. The government plays the role of the executor and act as if they are the trustee, and act, excuse me, and act as if you're the trustee, and make you pay the beneficiary. Therefore, um, appoints the judge and all agents of the state as trustee of the matter. You have to refute their presumption. It's a third-party contract. All right, trust law. In common law, the legal system, a trust is a relationship whereby property, real or personal, tangible or intangible, is held by one person for the benefit of another. You go to wikipedia.org, right slash wiki, right slash trust underscore law. They're performing trust law in court. They, they can violate trust law. They can't violate trust law. It's the highest law. Everything operates in threes, the whole trinity. So what that means is that you have to state for the record that you are the executor. This is the whole point of getting your birth certificate authenticated, is to put you back into the executor office. This is the example of the executor and how it looks, the executor letter. Can everybody see it? You need it, everybody. All right. So, yeah. All right. All right. So as you see here, 
All right, the executress or executor. You see the name, is state, the executor office, nation, your state, general post office, Main Street dash 100, any town, United States, minor outlying islands near. So right now, of course, um, all this can be written up. Your name will be your indigenous, um, will be your birth name, which is your slave or government name, and then a state right after that. Executor office, nation, um, your state, um, you can put your territory. Uh, for example, um, upstate New York would be the Mohican territory. All right. Um, general post office, you can put P.O. box or you, either you can put um, it in brackets. All right. Put the United States minor outlaying islands, or either you can put, once again, the particular territory of your indigenous ship. All right, as you see here on the night of uh, 22 October 22010, which is 2010, of course, you can put um, today um, 0229 2016. You can come down, you can see Office of Court Administrator, Chief Counsel of Chief Financial Officer. All right. Um, this can actually go to either one of the various agencies those that we'll talk about um, before we get off of here. All right. Um, if you have a court date, then this is one of the places that it can be sent to, name of the occupants of office. The right can be sent to this, the state attorney general. If it's at the state level, if it's at the federal level, then it can be at the United States Secretary, um, Secretary of um, All right, so um, Secretary of um, General Secretary. All right, so uh, what is taught to the um, United States Department of Justice? Now, it depends on, once again, if it's state or if it's federal. All right, especially if someone is in prison or in jail. If they're in jail, then this um, will go along with the payment bond, the, the bid bond, and the performance bond, which is the 24, 25, and 25A. If it's at the federal level, then it would be the 273, 274, 275. All right. Now, I'm just tell you exactly how to do it, how to fill it out. We will be sending um, this information to those on which that are up to date. Um, as well as also, you will see here, the mailing location of the United States or State Court Administrator or the financial institution foreclosed or collecting agency of the IRS high, um, headquarters in D.C. All right, this is basically what it says. In close, you will find abandoned paperwork which appears to erroneously allege that place the name and title of the author who signed the paperwork being returned such as private law bar um, card enrollees of the state bar association or any other governmental official bank collection officer magistrate mayor supervisor zone officer tax collection or collector here and remove these brackets who by their unwarrant Act fortunately claim authorized from this executive office to administrate for the name, which of course the name is your birth name, the state. This false claim is hereby adjourned. You will forthwith return and transmit the specific writing or specific written delegation of authority to represent the authorization to administrate, act as trustee, the name the state has been warranted together with a certified copy of your oath for the office. This is the chief 
council, attorney of law, government or bank official, office or remove these brackets occupied by certified copies of your bar bond. The office of name mail to above and remove these brackets and detail lists of any and all bonds, sureties, indemnification, insurance, court registry, investment um, system, which is called um, Chris or QSIP numbers and full account and related to any way to anyone's personal or pers of, um, professional involvement as rough as above and abrogate paperwork intrusion upon the name and state. And essentially what you're saying with all these words and the way that is structured is simply saying that anyone who's acting as the executor, you do not give anyone position to act as such, basically prove that they are the executor of this office. And since they cannot prove it, um, you can actually send out trustees, which is actually through a form 56, and what is also referred to as a fiduciary appointment letter to these individuals that you can make them trustee. All right, but they can't control and run the executive office, especially not when someone authenticated the birth certificate, which is proof of holding that office. Okay. Govern yourself accordingly. As you see here, some copy goes to the Office of, of um, Governor, Corporate Birth Certificate of, Office of Attorney General, etc., etc., Executor. That is your indigenous appellation. All right? And the name is state, which is your birth name is the state. The executive office or the executor is your indigenous appellation. All right. Only print out on legal size papers eight and a half by fourteen format of legal size eight and a half by fourteen paper. Okay. Now Who do we send the executor letter to? Well, let's see. Um, hopefully, we can put it up. All right, um, let me go out and come back in.
All right. All right, everybody should be able to see it now. Now, who received the executor letter? Well, you have the office of governor and the office of the attorney general of your birth state. You have the office of governor and office of general of attorney general, the state you live in. You have the attorney who represents the abandoned paperwork. You have the office of state court administrator or office of federal court administrator. You have office of court administration in Pacific Court where cases is filed. You have the office of Secretary of State, the state you live in. You have the office of Chief Counsel for Governmental Agency. You have the office of Chief Counsel for Corporation. You have the office of Chief Counsel for Department of, Res um, of um, Revenue, your state. You have the office of CFO, the corporation, creditor. You have the office of Chief Counsel for Internal Revenue Service, right? These are 11 areas that you can send based on the particular case that you have going on or matter that you have going on at that time. All right, so source of abandoned paperwork, attack, trespass against a state out of court. So let's say state taxing agency, collection letter, garnishment, liens, levy, etc. You would send a copy of your executive letter to the office of governor and office of attorney general of your state that you was born in, as well as the state that you live in, as well as also office of the chief counsel for the of, um, Department of Revenue of your state. All right, bank threatening foreclosure or collection. Um, office of governor and office of once again attorney general, your birth state that you in, um, birth state. That, uh, as well as also the state that you're in, um, Office of Secretary of State that you live in, as well as also Office of CFO, the corporation creditor. All right, you have the attorney collecting any debt. You have the birth state again. You have the state that you live in. You have the attorney who represents the abandoned paperwork as well as the office of CFO, the corporation, which is the creditor. All right, IRS, collection letter, garnishment, liens, levy, etc. Right, you have, once again, the birth state, the state you live in, Secretary of State, in which that you live in, as well as also the office of Chief Counsel for the Internal Revenue Service. You have the local or state taxes, property taxes, once again, um, the birth state is what the state you live in, as well as also council, chief council for the um, Department of Revenue. All right, collection agency notices. That's once again is the um, office of governor, office of the attorney general, birth state, um, as well as the state that you live in as well as the Chief Counsel for the Department of Treasure, of um, Department of Re um, Revenue. State taxes, liens, tax um, certificate filed at the county recorder without notice. Same areas again. All right, that is the Office of Governor, Office of Attorney General, the birth state, as well as the state you live in, as well as also um, Office of Chief Counsel for Department of Revenue. You have credit cards, search warrants, arrest warrants, indictments, etc. All right, copies go to the governor's office, the attorney general of the state, in and out. The attorney who represents the abandoned paperwork. The Office of the um, State Court Administration, whether it's state or federal administration court. Office of Court Administration, Pacific Courts, where the case is filed. And Office of CFO for Corporation Creditor. 
IRS issues in court, Office of Governor and Office of Attorney General. This is in-state, out-of-state, abandoned um, attorney who um, um, presented the abandoned paperwork. Office of State um, um, Court Administrator or Federal Office of Court Administration, Pacific Court would have filed cases recorded. Office of Secretary of State, state in which state you were in. And Office of Chief Counsel for Internal Revenue Service. Getting prisoners out of jail while waiting trial and out of prison post-conviction. Office of Governor and the Office of the um, Attorney General, Office of um, Attorney General just once again, the birth state as well as the state you live in. Office of State Court Administration or Federal Administration. The Office of um, Court Administration of Pacific Court where it is filed. Foreclosures, judicial and non-judicial. You have the Office of Governor, the Attorney General, birth state, states you live in, attorney who abandoned the prop, um, um, abandoned paperwork, Office of State Court Administration, and or Office of Federal um, Court, Office of the Court Administration, Pacific Court, with the case filed. Unlawful detainer, eviction, action. These are the same places that we just named, the exact same places that we just named for that also. Um, complaints by government to um, agency, federal, state, county, or local. That's the Office of Governor, Office of Attorney General, that's the birth state of state you're in. Um, attorney who represents the abandoned paperwork, Office of the State Court or Federal Court, depending on which area. Office of Court Administration and Pacific Court with the cases filed. Office of Chief Counsel for the Governmental Agency. Traffic tickets. Copy goes to Office of Governor, Office of Attorney General, birth state, birth state you um when your birth state in the state that you live in. Office of um, State Court. Um, Office of Federal Court Administration, Office of Court Administration, Pacific Court, where it is filed. All right. So bankruptcy it says C, bankruptcy selection for detail. Now, this is where you will send your executive letter to. Okay. So we showed you how to write up the executor letter and also who to send the executor letter to. All right. Will we get this information, Dr. Arlene? Mm -hmm. Yes, if everything is um up to um um up to par, um this information will go out to everyone. Thanks. All right. Um, any questions concerning anything that we've gone over? You can also go back and watch the recordings. Um, the recordings will go out to those who are up to Paul also. And everything that I went over is actually going to be right there on the recording also. Because everything was recorded on for tonight's um, class discussion. All right. 
All right, that's all I have for tonight. Um, so we'll try to get this information out to um, to everyone. Um, so um, there's no questions. I'm going to call it a night. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just asking, is there any type of way to discharge that without doing a uh, birth certificate or, or is it impossible? I mean, everything is predicated on the birth certificate. So how are you going to do that without the birth certificate? Uh, I'll just ask because the, the birth certificate is the original bond. Everyone that I've seen that tried to do that, the debt always came back to them because they never um, predicated anything on the original bond. They was trying to set it off. They trying to accept it for value or conditionally accept it for value or discharge it, and it never worked because they never um, was the executor um, office, and therefore. You know, how can you, you know, state that you discharge or something and you're not even in control of the office? You don't have no paperwork stating that you are. You know, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. But I've seen people um, um, do it, and within about a month or two, it came right back. Okay. So it would be best that they um, learn this process in which that we're talking about so that... Um, they have a paper trail that um, is much more sturdy instead of just wasting their time um, with something in which that is just going to come back on them. You got a sister who was just in the last class. She just um, discharged $165,000. She did that with the birth certificate, though, right? Yeah, she did it with the way in which I'm teaching. Matter of fact, she was so excited that she want to come back to class to learn more. But everybody got a chance in order to do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? The way that they want to do it. But I'm doing it a way in which that I know that works. You know, we haven't had anything to come back. But I've seen others who have done it. They discharge it for about a about three weeks to a month or so, but then it came right back. So the birth certificate okay. is the original bond. How can you go outside the original bond? Okay. And 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 the secure uh uh secure company, do you set that up or what? Yes, we um teach you how to do all of that. Of course, we'll get to that level as we continue on. You say next week? Um, depends on how well um everybody get this um process down here. As we send this information out next week, um, everybody need to have an example of the executor letter so they can get ready in order to send that information out, certified mail return receipt to these particular agencies. Yeah, uh, I can't do that. I can't do that until I get the birth certificate authenticated, right? Right. Okay, so I, I got to work on the birth certificate. You just being proactive, right, Dr. Darlene? Right. Okay. Is it anybody in here that already done their birth certificate? Right. This isn't about waiting until something happens. This is about getting on it now before anything happens so that you have all your ducks in a row or your I's dotted and all your T's crossed. Yeah. Yeah, especially while you're here to help us. Right. Uh, Brother L, not in here to do this. No, he's not here today, um, but um, those that have his phone number, y'all can call him. Uh, yeah, I was trying to see if any – has anyone else in the class on my uh, done they are both six? Yes, I have. Um, I know. Me, Brother L. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's work in progress, brother. Yeah. It's, it's work in progress. 
All right. And um, we're going to see everybody here Thursday. I'm going to try to have um, something ready as far as um, at least order your birth certificates, um, at least put together an executive letter, something, um, in order to make sure that you are moving towards the um, moving towards the um, right, um, right knowledge. All right. Okay. Everybody Thursday. All right. Peace, bro. All right. A R T Wash to Ish. A R T Wash to Ish. A R T Wash to Ish. Thank you.